Massive disclaimer before we even get this video started. These experiences that I'm about to share are personal to me. I know that this subject can be a touchy one. I know that there's a lot of different beliefs throughout the denominations about this subject. What I'm going to share is just what the Lord has taught me over the last four years, some of the experiences that I've had. And just because I've had these experiences doesn't mean that you have to have the same exact ones or doesn't mean that something is wrong with you because you haven't had these same exact experiences. This is just part of my story. And the Lord has told me over the last four years to just share what I'm learning. And I have not talked about this at all, ever, on any kind of online platform. So this is going to be really rough for me. <laughs> And I'm nervous to share it, but I also feel like it could really help some people. And it is part of my story and it is part of what the Lord's teaching me right now. So we're going to talk about spiritual warfare, angels, demons, visions, dreams, and spiritual gifts, and how all of that plays into our Christian walk and how we can use our authority as believers to fight against these things. And... This is going to be an interesting video, guys. I'm, I'm nervous, like I said, but I'm also excited to just share what the Lord's been teaching me over these last four years. My first memory that I can remember of having some kind of spiritual, strange, demonic encounter, not even demonic, demonic <laughs> encounter, was I was at a camp meeting um, and I was probably eight, 10 years old, I was pretty young, and there was a woman who the church elders were praying over, and she was foaming at the mouth, and then she levitated off of the ground. And that was my first time being like, whoa, what like supernatural thing is happening? What is going on? I was like eight, 10 years old, somewhere in there. And my mom grabbed my sister and I and was like, we gotta go because when the demon is cast out, it tries to find somebody else to get into. And I remember from a very young age, seeing these kinds of things, seeing demonic possession, being like, I knew it was real, but I, I don't feel like I had a good understanding of what was actually happening until I became an adult and started studying things out for myself and praying for wisdom to discern things. Um, so that was my very first encounter with seeing demonic possession. And so when you're an eight, 10 year old girl and you see someone levitate off the ground, you're like, whoa, well, that's obviously real. Like something is very wrong. And it was a supernatural thing, obviously. So it couldn't, like, I, there's no doubt about it, what I saw. So then growing up my, my whole life, I had some kind of, I didn't have a word for it. I just had these feelings of just knowing things about people. Like I would walk into a room, shake someone's hand and know things about them. And I, and usually, sometimes it was good, but most of the time it was like dark things in their lives or things that they were committing behind the scenes that nobody knew about. And I remember from a young age telling my mom, because my mom has the same exact gift, and being like, mom, I feel like something's really wrong there. Like I just have this feeling that something's like not quite right. I do want to talk about the difference between being hyper aware versus using discernment and that's what I came to know it as is discernment and that's the actual gift. Um, if you grew up in a very traumatic environment and you've experienced different kinds of abuse and stuff, it makes sense that you would be hyper aware of people. That's not quite discernment. Discernment is walking into a room and having a spiritual knowing something inside your spirit of like, I'm not supposed to be here or something is not right or even being able to see spirits or discern spirits in other people or even just in a room. And so 
not quite the same thing as like meeting someone and being like, I don't like this person, something's wrong with this person. Like there's, you know, you can read body language, all those different kinds of things. Not quite what I'm talking about. There's, there's a difference between being hypersensitive to people and an awareness versus a spiritual gift of discernment. And so about four years ago, about four years ago when I left the movement that I grew up in and started following Jesus and became non-denominational and just became a believer of Christ, I started studying out a lot of these different gifts and trying to get a understanding because I felt like I did not have the head knowledge of, I didn't have a name for it. I didn't, I couldn't place it into like a category, if that makes sense. And so I have had a history of having dreams, having discernments about people, having visions, and things happening and those things coming to pass, but I didn't have a name for it. And so about four years ago, when I met my husband, when I met Jake, I met him mid 2020 and Jacob has the gift of prophecy. And he was just so anointed with the Holy Spirit. And I knew that I had never seen prophecy really used. I know that a lot of people have used that to hurt a lot of people, used that gift in the name of that gift to hurt people. And, but something about the way that he carried himself and, and I could tell it was just the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. And I knew that the gift was active and real in his life. And I had seen him say things to people and then those things happen. And so, and it was, very very interesting to me and so as jake and i began getting closer and closer and closer and we started our relationship we started having conversations and i would start telling him about like these experiences that i've had and he really helped to navigate me through that time of like getting into the word what does the word say about this um giving me more like spiritual insight on things because i feel like he at that point had already experienced so much through college and he had seen so many different things and he had a better understanding than I did at that time and so I just started really praying like Lord I want to I want to understand I want to be able to use these gifts that you've given me and I want to use them for your glory and for your kingdom whatever that looks like I have had a lot of dreams where things in my dreams have happened or I've been somewhere and then like years in the future, never have been to this place before, just dreamed about it. And then I'd be like, mom, I dreamed about this and, and here we are, we're here. And I had a dream about Jake before I ever met Jake. And it was like two years into the future. I can't tell you how many times a month, oh, even a week where Jake and I will be doing something and I'll be like, babe, I dreamed about this like years ago. Like I just, it's this, overwhelming sense of deja vu and I don't know why the Lord gives me certain dreams about some things and he doesn't about other things but I just continually ask the Lord to like give me wisdom on how to pray for these things and people I have a lot of dreams about different people in my life and some that aren't even in my life anymore and so I feel like a lot of that knowledge that comes is just something that I really had to discern and work through and pray through. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know why you've given me this information and trying to discern if I'm supposed to sit with it or if I'm supposed to do something with it. Like, am I supposed to go out and have conversations with these people? Am I supposed to tell them that I had the dream or am I supposed to sit on it and be silent and pray? And so that's been interesting too, because <laughs> for the longest time I would have these dreams and I wouldn't know what to do with them. I was like, okay, Lord, you gave me this dream. Now what? What do you want me to do with this? I have no idea what you want me to do with this. And so I want to give an instance of a dream. I had a dream. I'll give the story of Jake because this is a happy dream. I had a dream probably about a year before I met Jake. I, I have it written down somewhere in my phone. I had a dream that I 
was with my husband. Couldn't see his face, didn't know what he looked like, but I was with my husband. I was walking down a street here in Tulsa. It's called Cherry Street. And I was in front of a restaurant and if you're familiar with Tulsa, it was Andalini's. I was in front of Andalini's, but there's also like a really fancy restaurant right next to it. And I was wearing this red dress and my husband like spinned me around and he hugged me really tight and he told me how beautiful I was and how much he loved me. And I remember waking up from that dream being like, that was so real and so vivid and I called my sister and I was like this dream was insane like isn't that wild she's like yeah that's wild fast forward Jake and I's first Valentine's Day married I wore a red dress he planned the date didn't know where we were going we went to the restaurant right next to Andalini's and when we pull up just like a wave hits me and I'm like we've done this before <laughs> and Jake's like what are you talking about and I didn't really say anything. I didn't go into like massive depth until we got inside. But when we, when we were walking up, he twirled me and he grabbed me and he hugged me really tight. And he was like, I love you so much. And you're so beautiful. Basically verbatim what happened in my dream. And then we went into Promosos, which is right next to Andalini's. And so in my dream, I thought we were going to Andalini's and I couldn't figure out why I was so dressed up for a pizza place. But Turns out it wasn't for the pizza place. It was the fancy place next door. And that's just one of the dreams that I've had of like things happening in my dream. And that's a happy one. That was a really sweet one. I've had some really dark dreams. Um, some really rough demonic things happen. And we'll get into that in a second. I do want to talk about like the joyful things and the goodness of all of that. And it's really, really cool that the Lord will give you little like snippets you know just like little things to hold on to to encourage you to look forward to and isn't he so good and isn't he just amazing but that's one of the best <laughs> memories one of the best dreams and I want to kind of segue from here from my dreams into angels and visions okay so I had a massive horse accident when I was five years old. I got on a horse, we didn't know she was pregnant, and she started bucking, and I fell off, but my foot was caught in the stirrup, so I was kind of like hanging like a rag doll, and she just walked all over me. I was five. I was five when this happened. And I remember all of that happening, and even to this day, I have a really hard time conceptualizing if this was real or if this was my little five-year-old brain, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. Um, there was like this presence there. And so this horse walked all over me. I'm hanging off and I'm not scared. I'm not fearful. I am not afraid. That day, I had a yellow dress on. It was my favorite yellow dress, and it had a sunflower on it, and I just love this dress. My dad finally was able to pull me out, and what had happened is, is she had walked all over my legs, basically, so my legs were just, like, bleeding a lot. I looked down, and I remember standing there, and my dress wasn't yellow anymore. It was red, and I was like, I'm bleeding, Dad. <laughs> And, um, but there was a presence there. In the middle of all of that, I felt, since I was like five years old, that there was a presence there. And earlier that day, I remember that whole day very, very well. My mom had picked my sister and I up from school and we were in the car headed to go see the horses. And I remember looking out the window, looking at the sky, and I remember saying to my mom, mom, I feel like something bad's going to happen today. And again, five years old. So I don't have like the perfect recollection of all of that, but I really felt and like I knew I just could, I just sensed something was going to happen. And then it did. And the doctor who patched me up said that if that horse would have kicked me in the stomach or the head or any part of this part of my body then I would have died and the cut that was on my leg was only an inch away from my main artery 
So it was very intense. I still have a massive scar on my leg from that horse accident. Uh, but I wasn't afraid and I wasn't scared and there was a peace. And so it, it's just from a very young age, just discerning things and having a feeling that there was something there. I want to talk about this presence that I have just been aware of, kind of like a vision that I've been aware of from a young age. Since I was a little girl, I've always just seen, while I was going to sleep, a very large, very, very bright man who was not Jesus. And I, I've always known that it wasn't Jesus. It's very strange. I've always known that it wasn't Jesus, but he's very strong. He is very brave. He's not afraid. He is there to protect. He is there to protect me. And I have felt that from a very young age, like going to sleep at night, there's this large man at the door protecting me. That's just how it's been. And when Jake and I got married and we moved into this house, before we even moved in, the day we bought this house, we came into this house, we sat in the middle of our living room floor, we anointed this house, we invited the Holy Spirit to dwell here, and then we've completely remodeled this house. So before we even started painting, we had all of our friends and family come in and write prayers all over the walls. And then we covered it with paint. But this doesn't change the fact that this house is filled with prayers, you know? And so one night, Jake and I were going to bed. And I, we both have had like, we at this time, we both had had some like weird spiritual things happening. We both felt like something dark trying to like get in to our home. And I remember being like, well, it's okay, babe, because we have angels. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, there's one at the front door and there's one in the back of the house. And it was just like a natural thing that I was like, yeah, they're, they're there. There's one in the front and there's one in the back. And Jake was like, you've never told me that you have had visions of angels in camping around our house. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're like there a lot, especially like when I, at night when I'm going to bed and I'm praying, I see them, I'm like, they're there. I just know they're there, whatever. And he was like, okay, wow, okay, good to know. And I didn't like put it together for the longest time because there's always just been my angel, right? There'd been my angel that had been with me throughout my life, guarding me at every door, just constant companion, right? And then when we moved into this house and Jake and I got married and we became one, there were no longer just, there wasn't just one angel anymore. There were two. And that's when I realized the other one was Jake's angel. And the Bible has some really, really cool verses about angels and about protection and sending the Lord sends angels to protect us and to guard us. That is my angel story. <laughs> Nothing like insane. The angels don't speak to me or anything like that. It's just like a, a knowing of the presence of the of the angels being aware of them and having the protection now let's talk about the dark things that i have seen the, we've talked about like the goodness of god the protection that he gives the authority that we have as believers but i talked about the first time i saw somebody demon possessed levitate off the ground all of that Jake and I had been married probably about a year and we had went to the Tulsa State Fair and we were walking around and from a distance I saw this man and as soon as I saw him I was like that's a demon and I can't before I even saw his face it was very strange I was just like that's a demon and I like I'm like Sometimes Jake can tell too. I think that my gift on this is a little bit stronger than his, but normally he can like sense things. There's been times that he's pulled this out of places where I wasn't aware of it and he's been like, we got to get out of here. Um, but this specific time, I was like, Jake, 
Jake. And we're walking. And as we're walking, we're getting closer to this man. And when this man looks at me, I'm not being dramatic. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. The man looks me dead in the eyes and his eyes are completely black. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched Supernatural. Don't really recommend it. But in Supernatural, they show like the demons when the demons are there, just black. That's exactly what it looked like. And I'm like, Jake, do you see this man's eyes? Do you see his eyes? They're completely black. Do you see them? And as we get closer, this is what's wild. As we get closer, like we're walking past this man, he does this weird like like wave. Like he, he looks at me and he can see that I can see him. He knows that I can see what he is. And he does this weird thing. But as we're walking past, he steps back from us. Like he wasn't walking like, this light like we're coming this way right he wasn't walking this way he's like right here standing like this like facing us we're walking side like this and when i'm here he steps back just like we weren't even that close to begin with but he couldn't be that close to me and so i was like jake that's a demon do you see his eyes do you see his eyes like do you see can you see and Jake's like, Jen, I don't see anything. Like, I think that you're seeing into the spiritual realm right now. And I was like, that's the first time anything like that has ever happened to me. Where I was like, I just saw it and I knew that it was a demon. And it wasn't like any manifestation of anything. There was not anything crazy supernatural. It was just like something is wrong. And that is a demon. And I know it is. And so I'm praying over us. I'm praying for protection over us. I'm doing all the things. And we keep walking around another 30 minutes he passes us again and basically same exact thing happened and i asked jake again to look into his eyes jake didn't see anything so i'm still 100 percent certain of what i saw and i know what i saw and i'm certain that it was a demon and it was extremely intense and at that point I was still pretty, like Jake and I have been married about a year, still trying to discern a lot of things, trying to find, figure out how do I really pray against these things and how do I, as a child of God, take the authority of Christ and use those things to fight, to fight those things. I also want to preface by saying that I think a lot of people believe that everything is demonic and they hyper spiritualize everything i do not think that everything is demonic not everything is spiritual warfare we have consequences of our own actions but there is a spiritual battle happening there is things happening in this world that we cannot see and so i read this book uh, by frank peretti called this present darkness amazing book if you have not read it highly recommend and it talks, it gives the perspective of the angels, of the demons, and of the humans, and like this fight that is happening in our world. And it was so good. And I could feel the Holy Spirit, even while I was listening to this book, I listened to it on audio. And I just started praying because it was, it was really interesting. The thing about this book is that all the angels have names, all the demons have names, okay? So I just started thinking about the importance of names. And like having a name to call something what it is. And I started praying like, Lord, I want to know what are these? What, what are, the, what's the name? Like, tell me the name. And so I, over the last two years, have been like, Lord, I want to understand. I want you to give me the tools to be able to use my authority as a child of God and the Holy Spirit dwelling in me to fight against these things because we do not fight against principalities or power. We fight against the spiritual things of this world. We do. There, there's evil spirits and, and there are demonic things that are happening in this world. And I want to have the wisdom and I want to be vigilant about fighting against them in prayer and being able to use my authority as a child of God. Do I believe that spiritual warfare is real? Absolutely, I do. Do I think that everything is a demonic attack? No, I don't. I think we have to deal with the consequences of our own actions. And it's always like ironic to me when 
people blame the devil. They give the devil so much credit. It's like, oh, the devil's just making me go through it. It's like, no, dude, you made these decisions and now you're here. You made those choices and now you're dealing with the consequences of your own actions. You messed up and now you got to deal with that. At the same time, there is spiritual warfare. There are demons. Demons are real. I do not believe personally as believers that we can be possessed by demons. I don't. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us, dwells in us. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Unless we invite something in, you do not need to be afraid of becoming demon possessed. And I stand on that. Um, I do believe that as believers, we can be oppressed. And what do I mean by that? I mean by this heaviness that is laid on people. I have experienced very short amount of times of where I felt just like this overwhelming spiritual heaviness. But I don't think that I have went a long period of time. I have friends that have. I've had friends that have had a lot of demonic torment just over them, mocking them, speaking to them in the night, demons just like taunting them. Christians, how do we handle that? We stand firm on the word of God and we use our authority as believers to speak to that thing. Jesus has given us the authority that he used to cast out demons. He has given us the authority to speak to those things. We are Jesus's hands and feet. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I truly do believe that when you pray and you anoint your home and you say, no, this will not enter. This will not enter my house. I will not allow it. And you, you give your home over and over and over to the Lord. Same thing with your body. It's the same exact thing. Like, Lord, my body is yours. I give it to you. Protect me. Do what you want to do. And I truly believe that that makes the demons tremble. And that makes Satan so angry. And so we really have to get into this place of not fear, not fear, not being scared that a demon's going to attack you, but of confidence that you are in the hands of God and that you have the authority to speak to these things and say, no, in the name of Jesus, because it's only by the blood of Jesus. That is, that's it. Without Jesus, we have nothing. We can do nothing. But by the power of the blood, of what he did on the cross for our sins, he died, he rose again three day, in three days, he died for our sins, he took on all the sin of the world, and then he resurrected to go sit at the right hand of the Father. That is the gospel. He is good, he is holy, and he has given us the authority to speak to these things and say, no, you have no power here, you are powerless here. And in that, won't he be glorified? by speaking to these things and saying you have no place here you do not belong here you're done you're done jesus is magnified because it's not about us it's about him and it's about his glorification and i my prayer for my home and jake and i's house and and any time i think about our home i'm just like i want this to be a place where the holy spirit lives not a place that he visits but a place that he dwells and that when people come into my home they can sense a peace here they can sense the joy they can sense uh this comfort of the lord darkness has no place in my home in my body in my heart in my mind in my soul and it's not just about saying those things and speaking those things aloud, I do think that there is power in our words, but not in a like manifestation way. Manifesting is new age and saying you can speak something into existence is not true. Um, I do believe there's power in our words. I believe that our words do matter, but I'm saying it has to start at your heart. It has to start in your soul of this deep desire of just wanting more of Jesus. And so when I was praying about making this video and I was praying about like, Lord, I want this video to help somebody. I really felt this deep call to just tell you that if you are feeling like something is not quite right, 
there is this darkness that is just following you. There's a heaviness on your spirit and you are a Christian or even if you're not a Christian, please listen to my words. You can have freedom in Christ and you have the power to speak to that thing and say, in the name of Jesus, get out. You have no place here. I command you back to hell. I send you back to hell where you belong, never to return, never to inhabit this earth again. You have the power to say that. And I do believe that if you speak to those things and you call those things out, you have to be very intentional about praying for no retaliation. Because Jake actually taught me this, because when you speak to something or you pray against something, usually there's some kind of retaliation in the demonic realm. Like just something happens evil and they just try to send more things. And so when you pray to these things, you have to be very precise of what you say. You command them back to hell, you pray against any retaliation and you cancel everything in the name of Jesus. Any altar that your name has been been put on any kind of assignment that has been sent you cancel it all in the name of jesus and you plead the blood over your body over your soul over your home and your family and your friends and you just pray over that and you i you don't have to live this way that's what i really want to say you don't have to live in a tormented demonic state you don't there is freedom there is joy there is peace in Jesus. That doesn't mean following Jesus is easy, but it does mean that in Christ, you are free. In Christ, you can find grace, you can find peace, and there is a rest. There is a rest in Christ, and you do not have to live that way. I told Jake last night when I wanted, that I felt led to make this video, I wanted to make this video, and I, I didn't even like scratch the surface of some of my stories because I am still being very prayerful about the things that I feel like is okay for me to share versus the things that aren't okay for me to share. And I'm trying to discern that for myself of what I feel comfortable sharing. Um, but there is power in, in Christ and in the gifts that he's given us, whether you have discernment or not, pray for discernment. Say, Lord, I want discernment. If I'm not supposed to be here, tell me. If, if I'm not supposed to be around that person, tell me and give me wisdom on how to live my life. Give me wisdom on how to walk. Tell me what to pray, Lord. Tell me how to fight against these things. But I just want to encourage your heart. If you're walking through some kind of weird heaviness, you have the power to speak to those things. You have the power to say in the name of Jesus. And if you're not a believer, and you've watched my video and you're trying to discern or figure out, you're trying to figure out if you even believe in Jesus. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hearing my heart. Thank you for taking the time to just search. And I want you to know that if you're searching, you're already in a really good position to see Jesus for who he is, because he is truth and the Bible is truth. And Jesus is the son of God and I want to just have a call for you to come home, for you to come into the arms of Jesus because at the end of the day, the Bible says the demons tremble, but they even know his name. They know the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage your heart and just have a call to, to come to Jesus and to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And I really hope this video encourages all of you. I would love to answer any questions as you have in the comments. I know that this this video feels so chaotic to me, <laughs> but I was supposed to do it, so I did it. I would love to answer any questions that you have and just know that um, if you're trying to discern the spiritual realm, you're not alone. Just keep praying about it. Keep studying God's word about it. The, the word is filled with so many different scriptures about angels and demons and visions and dreams and the Lord's been using them since the beginning of time. So just know that you're not alone. Just know that you have authority in Christ to speak to these things and that it's only by his power and by the blood of Jesus.